Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now later as time passed, what happened? Other scientists also continued to study on these same lines. Now as I said, in order to uh, view a cell or the internal structure of a cell, you actually need very, very powerful microscopes. So the microscope which was designed by Robert Hooke was however able to show those empty spaces which he defined as cells, but it was not powerful enough to study the internal structure of cells. So with better microscopes over time, scientists were able to find new details as well. Now as time passed, there was another scientist, Robert Brown, somewhere around 1833. So just look at the time gap. Cell was discovered in 1665, but Robert Brown discovered nucleus around 1833. So a huge time in between. That's because not, as I said, the equipments were not there. So if you don't have equipments, you will not be able to discover anything. So Robert Brown discovered nucleus in a cell. So nucleus is the main control center of the cell. Nucleus is that part of the cell which controls all the activities which take place inside a cell. We will talk about each of these parts in detail later. So it was not only Robert Brown, there was another scientist called Leeuwenhoek who also discovered or who also described the details of a living cell that is paramecium. We all know what is paramecium. We have often spoken about it. So it is a microorganism and he actually described the details. He could study the entire structure and the details of paramecium. So gradually different scientists started coming out with different details about the cell. So I, I just named one or two of them but there were other scientists as well who discovered other parts or other components of a cell. So with time a cell theory was proposed. So there was a pair of scientists Sclidon and Schwann. Somewhere around 1839 they proposed the cell theory. So what was this cell theory about? This cell theory was all about the existence of cells. So the cell theory tells what are cells and why do they exist. So the cell theory stated that cells are the structural and functional units of all life forms. Structural unit because they are like the building blocks as I said. Many bricks together will make the building. Similarly, many cells together will make the entire structure of the living organism. So that's why they are the structural unit. And why are they functional unit? Because each and every cell will perform a specific function. And all those functions when taken together will form the entire organism. For example, if you consider human beings, we perform so many functions. We are able to move our hands, we are able to think, we are able to eat. Right? We are able to do so many things. That's because of the organs which we have. And what are the organs made up of? They are made up of tissues and the tissues are made up of cells. So basically the cells are performing different different functions and all those things when coordinated and taken together is forming the entire organism. So this is what was stated by the cell theory initially which was proposed by Sclidon and Schwann. They said that Cells are the structural and functional unit of all life forms. Again, some time later, there was another scientist called Virchow around 1855. He added to the cell theory. He modified the cell theory saying that cells arise from pre-existing cells. Now, till before Virchow came, it was not known to scientists that how new cells are formed. So now since the number of cells are increasing, so how are they formed? So Virchow came and he told that cells arise from pre-existing cells. So whatever cells are already existing, they only give rise to new cells. And what is that process? We Now we know that in detail. So that process is nothing but the process of cell division. So that is a, a completely uh, new, new, not new, but it is a complete 
concept which needs to be taken separately. So we will talk about cell division in one of our later chapters. So there we will see how cells actually arise from pre-existing cells. So you see with over a period of time, there were so many advancements related to cell. It was in 1665 when cell was first seen by Robert Hooke and he named them as cell. Then later different scientists discovered different parts of the cell, different components of the cell and the cell theory came into picture in 1839 which was again modified by Virchow. So finally what are the different postulates of the cell theory like today also we have a accepted a modern accepted cell theory so what are, what are the points mentioned in that cell theory so the cell theory primarily says that cells are the structural and functional units of life so this was this was the basic statement of cell theory which was given by Sladen and Schwann all organisms are made up of cells so any type of living organism starting from a bacteria to a human being to an elephant to a plant to aquatic organisms all of them are made up of cells all cells arise from pre-existing cells only so there is no other way that new cells can be formed they can form only from pre-existing cells so these were the three main important points of the cell theory which were proposed during the time but now as time is passing and more and more scientists are observing new things so few more points have also been added to the cell theory by modern scientists like Nucleic acid is the genetic material in all cells because by now we know the entire internal structure of a cell. We know about each and every cell component. We know it in detail. So they have added it that nucleic acid is the genetic material. So all cells have that genetic material which actually helps plays a very important role during reproduction. Cells interact with each other which results in the organism's function. As I said, in human beings also we have multi, we are multicellular. So there are many cells inside our body. So there has to be an interaction between the cells so that the body can perform the functions. As I said, for example, the digestive system taking place inside our body. It doesn't happen by one organ alone. So there are so many organs playing their own roles in the digestive, in the process of digestion. For example, the stomach, the intestine, the mouth, the pharynx. So all of them are playing their own part and all those things when synchronized together will form the digestive system. So everything has to happen in the correct order. So there has to be a coordination between the different cells. Basic chemical composition is more or less same in all cells. So when you talk about what is a cell made up of, I mean, I'm not only talking about the structure of a cell, what are the different parts of a cell, I'm also talking about what is it made up of. Is it made up of proteins? Is it made up of carbohydrates? What is, is it made up of water? So what is it made up of? So if you talk about that chemical composition, more or less in all type of cells, whether it is a plant cell or an animal cell, or the cell of an insect or the cell of a human being so more or less the chemical composition will remain the same however when you talk about plant cells and animal cells uh, there are a few notable differences between the two but when you talk about any animal cell whether the cell of an insect or the cell of a bird they are more or less the same so when you talk about chemical composition anyways all the cells will have almost the same chemical composition not much difference so these are the postulates which are there in the cell theory so now let us quickly look at an overview of cell so by now we know how the cell was discovered how was the cell theory how did the cell theory come into picture so let us quickly see what is cell as i already told this quite a number of times before when you talk about any living organism here you can see this person standing his body also is made up of many cells so one cell will look somewhat like this it is very similar to how this building is getting built with the help of bricks so once it is built maybe it will look somewhat like this so these are the building blocks. So similarly, many such cells when joined together will form this entire organism. 
Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.